Hi, my name is Jonathan Benhamo. I have uh, opened a high school for boys that didn't fit in the regular yeshivas in the regular system. And one thing I can say that the system of Avi, the approach of Avi, has helped me a lot. Just the way he says it, accept the boys, give them love, give them acceptance. And I had this boy that was really, really very hard, it was violent, we even went, uh, <laughs> we rested, <laughs> rested. And it was all the words in Spanish, English, F, everything. And it was really violent. People told me, two big mechanchim, who I spoke to, told me, stop being a hero, save your school, otherwise you'll, the whole school will sink, sink down. So to me, it looked like a terrorist. So I said, if here he looks like a terrorist, if I'll kick him out, then he'll for sure. That's the last place where he still belongs to society. If I kick him out and really doesn't belong to society, then he really becomes a terrorist. So what did he do? First of all, was the inner commitment that, and I even told him that, I'm not kicking you out. Whatever will happen, we're together. I'm not kicking you out. And things happened afterwards. Even one time I told him, that's it, we're done. You're not happy here. You don't want to be here. So why do we have to? And he was very upset. And how do I kick him out and everything? I told him, listen. Then afterwards I asked Haroto, I can't kick him out. I said, Hashem also kicked us out. He kicked us out of his house. But you know something? When he kicked us out, he didn't kick out the bad ones and he stayed with the good ones. That's one thing. And another thing, he also went to Golos. He's with us. He left the house to, to go with us. He didn't kick us out, so I can't kick you out. And just acceptance, the love, and going with him. And really, sometimes we didn't learn as much because of him. That's true. But the whole yeshiva, even the other boys gain from it because they saw that really we take care of, we, we look at them. We're not looking at an institution. It's not that I care about the name. It's not that I care about that the school will be a good school. I care about each and every one. That you, what, 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 what do you need? And the whole school changed. Now they, they love their place. They thrive. So just like Avi says, it's not just about the keep. It's about everybody else, all, everybody gains. He is now the most loyal bocher to the yeshiva. He's really, he put a, a sticker of the yeshiva in his uh, cell phone, on his coat. He takes the name of the yeshiva. Whoever he talks to, he talks about the yeshiva miracles, about me. He's mamish, the most loyal. Just like as Avi says, that, that that kid will be the one who will take care of you. I really feel like that. Even though it's just being a year, and he's still not, <laughs> it's not that he's grown out of the project, he's still working and a lot of work to be done, but Bor Hashem is really, I, I see, I see how if someone will take care of uh, the Moisa lately, sure it will be him. Beautiful. That's what we need, that's what we need. We need more and more Mechanchem that understand that we're not going to lose kids and that when someone can't make it, they need help, not rejection, but they need help, right? What you said about the fact that you thought if he's so bad over here, imagine how bad he'll be. So Shamshan Rafal Hirsch writes, and don't think I'm a big expert, it's in the art scroll Chumash. Why didn't Avram Avinu want to send away Yishmael? So he says because he understood what, how bad Yishmael was, and he said, if he's so bad in my house, can you imagine what he's going to be if I throw him out? It's just going to make him much worse. And in the end, of, Yishmael did tshuva. And we know that Avram was makar of him, not for now, but he's makar of him even after Hashem said to send him away. He went to look for him and he brought him back by the Akeda, he was there. He did tshuva in the end. This is what we find from the Chazanish. The Chazanish said that, why didn't Noyach, Noyach had a son. The son did something really bad in the table. He broke the rules, right? So why don't you throw him out? He said, because when there's a mobble outside, you don't throw a kid out. He said, today, you have to consider the street is a mobble. This is another story of Rav Steinman. They want to throw a boy out. They said, why, why do you have to throw him out of yeshiva? Why don't you just take a gun and shoot him? It'll be much faster, a much faster death for him than sinking out in the street. There are many, many stories. But on the other hand, you have, you have a school, 
and you have and you have a good point to say I can't run a school like this, right? But the point is that everybody thinks that if we're going to be nice, they're going to get worse. It's not true. When we're nice, they get better. You save the boy and you save the school, and you have a friend for the rest of your life. And so many people say who went through hard hardship. They'll take a bullet for a Rebbe like this. They'll take a bullet for friends like this. And on top of that, I'll end with this story. And you enjoy his company a lot now. He's not a terrorist anymore because you don't look at him anymore like a terrorist, even though when he deserved it, you changed your eyes. So the com- he heard that he's coming to America. So he came, came with him and he came looking for him before. He came to give me a hug. And he said, because, I don't know, somehow you saw my videos, that he said that I helped save his life. I didn't even know the kid. I don't even know you. You saw the videos, and then you got a different thing, a different idea. Let's try to save the kid. But how do you save a kid who's out of, out of whack? More attention, more love. Kiyodua, liyoide, kip. Those who know, that's what works. But I want to tell you something else. You'll have siyata deshmaya for your yeshiva. All these stories, by the way, and these divrei are all in my book, Raising Royalty, which is coming out. Maybe by the time people see the video, it came out already. Chelek Aleph, it's going to be Mitzvah Shem. We have 6,000 stories. But listen to this. What's the biggest yeshiva in Eretz Yisrael? The Mir. Maybe in the world. Why is Mir Yeshiva the biggest yeshiva in the world? So you know what? Who's the biggest Maggid Shir over there? Rabasha. Rabasha Arieli said over this story. After the Holocaust, a bunch of Rosh Yeshivas came from Shanghai, from whoever, whoever survived, they all came to Eretz Yisrael from every town. And they all tried to open yeshivas. One town was called Mir. So the Mir, Jamir, they tried to open yeshiva, but there were a lot of, tons of Rosh Yeshivas. Now we know the Mir. A lot of these other yeshivas, you know, we know Slabatka, a few of them made it. A lot of them we don't know. So Rabasha said, why, why, why was the Mir Zaycha to become so successful? So let's listen to this story. Who, what was the name of the Rosh Hashiva that opened up the mirror in Eretz Yisrael? You know what they say in the mirror. Yeah, the Vinkel is the Finkel. Finkel. Which one? Reb Nelson Svi Finkel. Not the one when I was there, the original. He came to Eretz Yisrael, he opened up a yeshiva, a good yeshiva, a top yeshiva, and he took Bachim from then, the top yeshiva was called Eitz Chaim. He had a handful, 10, 12, 14, doesn't sound like more than that, Top Bachrim that came to his new yeshiva, the Mir. Okay, you can imagine a little classroom, imagine 1940, I don't know what, what it looked like. And somebody who was in the yeshiva was a guy who was making a lot of trouble. So some boys went to him and they complained and they said, he's going, I don't know what they did in those days. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was probably a mitzvah compared to what, <laughs> what we're doing now. Maybe he went to a bar, maybe he was hanging out, I don't know. But he was doing bad stuff, and he was telling everybody, oh, I learned in the mirror. So they said, listen, we left where we were, we came here, we want to be part of a yeshiva with a good name. We want to do good shaduchim, we're building up a yeshiva to have a shame taiv. And he's going everywhere, bad enough he's not behaving according like yeshiva bach, and he's doing bad stuff, but he's doing free advertising. I'm in the mirror, I'm in the mirror. So he's ruining it for us. The yeshiva heard them, he didn't do anything. Short while later, all the Bachim got together. They said the Rashiva didn't do anything. We have to take matters into our own hands. They came, all of them, to the Yeshiva. All of them came to the Yeshiva, to the Rosh Yeshiva. And they said to him, either him or us. Either him or us. All in. So now it's a big threat. He just opened the yeshiva. He has the top boys from Eitz Chaim. He's starting the yeshiva with... And they all said, either you tell him to go, or if you want, you want to keep him, we're leaving. Because we want to be in a top yeshiva. We learn day and night. We, we don't want to be a part of this yeshiva that has a bad name. So Reb Nassim Svi Finkel, that's how I'll said to them, I thought that I'm going to be a big Rosh yeshiva. And I'm going to get the best boys. And I'm going to be a yeshiva, the top yeshiva must meet him. That's what I wanted. I see Hashem doesn't want me to be that Rosh yeshiva. So I guess you'll go, and you'll go to another one, of, another Rosh yeshiva. Like I said, there were so many that were trying, and that Rosh yeshiva is going to be the Rosh yeshiva of the Chash of Abacham, and I'll stay here, and it'll be just me and him. 
said Rabbi Shariyeli, because of Mesiris Nefesh, that he was willing to lose everything. He was just starting off after a Holocaust, after everybody in the mirror was murdered. And he's starting off with top boys, and they're boycotting, they're all going to leave. And he said, I wanted to have a Chashiv Yeshiva, but if it means being Merachik, this Bachar, I guess someone else will be the Chashiv Yeshiva, and I'll have Yeshiva, just me and him. I have goosebumps. You can cry from this. This is a Mechanach. Someone else will have a good yeshiva. Someone else will have a chashiv yeshiva. And it'll be me, just me and him, and I'll have a shvach yeshiva for one boy who's... Said Rebash Arieli, that was the schos. Why Mir grew more than any other yeshiva. So Debesh is al Not only are you going to have a yeshiva, rabbi. Not only are you going to have a yeshiva. But your yeshiva is going to be the one that's going to be a thousand times bigger than all the other yeshivas. Because you're not running a, a uh, company. And you're not running a factory. You're not running an uh, assembly line. You're dealing with neshamas. And that's chus, that you were willing to lose everything. You got the boy back. The other boys are doing better. They realize how much you're invested in them and you really care about them. This boy is going to be the biggest supporter. And all of them are going to love you. And your yeshiva should go grow and grow and grow and grow. You're going to be the biggest rosh yeshiva in the world. And everybody in the room, make sure you get a bracha from him. Because one day the lines are going to be so far out. Please make sure I can cut. I want to be able to get to the front of the line. I'm saying, it's, it's Avi, Avi, what? The Gaboyim are going to say, <laughs> we don't know you. Wait outside for two hours till the Rosh Hashiva can come and see you. You're going to be part of Kupara here, and that's it. Hashem should help all Machantchem to be like this. We don't lose Bachrim, we don't lose anybody, no matter what, because not because then we're going to sink. Then we're going to swim. Then we're going to grow. Then we're going to be Matzliach, not just with that Bachr. We'll have Siyat for the rest of the Yeshiva as well.